Amazing, always a, a great interview and honest insight there. And the biggest takeaway being, hey, obviously Xpeka has things to work on, but kind of the influence he brings outside of the game as well is what is propelling us forward. It certainly is, Peke. Um in game one, especially, landing a lot of crucial arrows. In game two, he was really going to town on that. Ezreal had a fantastic <laughs> scoreline. So Rudy is having a big impact drawing him in. Um, what I'm really interested to see is moving forward, how uh, if they're going to keep with Peke, because he definitely adds a lot of value to the team. Certainly seemed like it. Uh, I must admit I was watching the Fnatic series, but it looks like mid lane was the most influential by uh, the stat lines and some of the uh, ending parts of the game. Can you maybe set up game two for me? Because I didn't quite catch the early game. Yeah, so the early game, fortunately, it was pretty much all about the mid lane. A lot of emphasis was put down onto shutting Betsy down and making sure the power of you succeeded. Very similar to what we saw in game one. We actually have a really cool replay of how a lot of that happened during the early game because all of the emphasis coming out from Origin was basically, let's kill Betsy, let's make sure that Power of Evil is really strong. And they had this great synergy with the Karma and with the, uh, with the Kindred to actually set these ganks up. So you can see Betsy... Uh, He's just farming away in the mid lane. He thinks that absolutely everything is fine. And Power of Evil making these really aggressive, proactive plays, constantly trying to catch Betsy out of position. Hybrid with the ninja gank out of nowhere enables OG to get themselves a second kill onto Power of Evil very early on into the game. And this was just really the beginning of the snowball from OG. Looked like a, a solid start in the Karma I quite like to see out of Power of Evil as well. It's a, a pick we can add to the list. We saw the Azir as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy but looking at the performance from the rest of the game from game two when it looks at origin and, and how they performed. Indeed, uh, very interesting. On the side of Rockat, not very good signs, obviously, because we looked at the early game, OG tried to and did exploit that. And then when Rockat tried to pull it back in their favor, it didn't quite work out. We have a pretty deciding team fight, I would say, uh, up on your screen where it turns out being a four for zero for OG, but Rockat could have walked away with the advantage. So here they get the pick down onto hybrid. This is a great setup from Rockat. OG have no real answer. The execution is clean and Think of how many resources they've invested into getting that kill, but they want more. They get the lockdown onto Soaz. Arax is flashing in aggressively, but there's just no way for the rest of the team to follow up. And then you have Amazing with this amazing ultimate to keep his team alive, and then they get the turnaround. Arax goes down because he's just overcommitting way too much, and then you get this phenomenal teleport flank coming in from Soaz, which enables the rest of Origin to just cleanly win the fight. And it was simply a matter of Rockat overcommitting way too hard. They felt like that they had to make this play and they just didn't have the resources to commit to that sort of an advantage. And I feel like that that's kind of the downfall of watching Rocket, right? Is in their minds they can fight at almost all points in the game. As soon as they're like, hey, this is what I come on to do, we're Rocket, we're great at this. And then you look and it's so early, they're behind already, they don't quite have all of the tools they need in that scenario to keep pushing. And that honestly, lo looking at both games uh, at a glance, seemed to be a big problem is they just weren't ready for the fights that they wanted to take, weren't set up properly. So it, it's a, a tough, tough loss for Rocket considering yep. the first two weeks. Yeah, I would say definitely. Definitely an ON2. I, I did think that they could get at least a tie here if they got back on their feet in game two, but that didn't happen. Very good for the side of Ojito and our player of the game for game two is amazing. Uh, someone we were looking at to put pressure on or not pressure, or put uh, emphasis on the top lane rider or emphasis on so as this time. I love that OG went from to a different strategy that they had Peke camping mid in game one, then he had Amazing in that fight game two. So they're not confined to one or the other plan. Week one, uh, Soaz realized he needed to step up. There was a lot of problems having a new AD carry on, especially an AD carry that doesn't typically play AD carry. Now with this week, Soaz has said, I can take a step back. I don't need to be the big carry anymore because Power of Evil is stepping up, Peke is stepping up, and really overall the team. And the big facilitator for all of that has been amazing. He's been putting a lot of pressure in the right place his vision control has been really good and amazing overall has been setting up OG for success. So moving forward, I think he really will be the player to watch. Puzzle seems to be falling in place for OG 2-0 over Rocket. And while they were doing that over here on stream EULCS1, over on stream EULCS2, Fnatic and Schalke are still going at it. There's currently a pause on stage, but Stress, can you run us through what happens? Uh, Fnatic won game one of the series. What's happened in game two? So game two, Schalke first pick is Zia, and everybody's a little bit confused at what Schalke are, are trying to to do and unfortunately um, they're not in a good spot right now when you look at their game against Fnatic. Uh, Spirit has done a great job out of the jungle of punishing some
some of the picks. They've got a pick onto that Azir once already. A lot of ganks going towards the mid lane as well. The one thing Shalka do have to their benefit is two Infernal Dragons that they picked up fairly early on. So there's an outside chance for Shalka to still come back in that game. But man, Spirit with his ultimate is doing work over on that stream. Sadly, an extended pause over there, but you can check in. Uh, they're having some cute images of the, the cosplayers and everything <laughs> behind the scenes in the studio. So that might be interesting. However, with Origin taking uh, starting our week two with a 2-0 and oh sweep, we're going to take a break here on EULCS1. Up next in the arena, it is Team Vitality versus the Unicorns of Love. So don't touch that dial. The Olive Nation. 